What are you demanding? For whom are you demanding them? For who else? Which children's rights are most important to you? Wow, that was a lot. There are lots of children's rights and they apply to all children, all over the world. For you too. And here's what it's all about this time. From Germany, I'm talking to children in Africa, in northern Kenya. Hi, really. There is a shortage of water and hardly any food. Children's rights are often violated. Then we'll go to South America, to the capital of Colombia, Bogota. In a dangerous suburb, children no longer dare to go out on the streets. So, and when the line leads back to Camp Lindfort in Germany, we have a nice triangle over half the world. Papelsee Elementary School is a school that really promotes children's rights. Whether it's about welcoming new pupils, conflict solvers in the schoolyard, or the purchase of new climbing frames, it's always about the rights of the children. Now, I'm curious to see what's going on here in Class 34D. Come in! Hello! Hello! Would you like to sit down? Thank you very much. Here, you can sit next to me. Thank you. Great. I'm Willie. Hi. I'm Maya. Oh, that's nice. Hello, Maya. Where am I here? In the class council. The class council is a regular school meeting. Everything that is troubling pupils and what is going well is discussed, without the teachers interfering. Class representative Inas leads the class council. What do you like about your lessons? Aspen? I think it's great that we are a children's rights school. May I ask a question? Sure. What exactly does children's rights school mean? You have rights that you can use. For example, if someone insults you, you can say, stop, I don't want that. Every child should respect the rights of every other child. And I also wanted to say that I think it's great that we are allowed to help shape our school and our classes. Which I think is also a children's right, isn't it? Children's rights protect and strengthen what is important to you children. At a children's rights school like the Papelsee Elementary School, children's rights are taught, respected, protected and put into practice. Maya, how is that done? We talk to the teachers and we can say what we don't like about our lessons or anything else. Do they take your opinions seriously? I think so. We also give grades. It's amazing. The students actually write report cards for the teachers at the end of each semester and tell them what they are doing well and what they are doing not so well. And when the school council is over, you have something to eat? Yes, then we can take an apple and eat. Isn't that also a children's right? Yes, the right to eat and drink. The right to healthy food. Is this only for children or also for reporters who are curious? Uh, also for reporters. Then I'll take something right away. But help yourselves first. What's there? Apples and? Pears. Not only the children here in third and fourth grade, but all children in the world have the right to healthy food and clean drinking water. This is the only way to stay or become healthy and be strong enough for everything else. And that's what the Stanzinger project in Africa is all about. In Africa. To be precise, in northern Kenya, an area where the traditional Turkana people live. The Turkana live in close contact with their camels, cattle, sheep and goats always on the lookout for water and food for their animals. The Turkana's habitat is strongly impacted by climate change. There is often no rain for months on end, and people and livestock suffer from the drought. A few years ago, I was traveling for you in this very area, and I still have good friends there today, especially Scholastica. And I'll give her a call now. She's a nurse, but also a nun in a Christian church. Really? Scholastica, hi, it's me. How are you? We've missed you. How have you been? How is your family? How is everything over there? I'm doing well. We're well, thank you. I'm here at a children's rights school, and I wanted to ask, what's the status of children's rights in Turkana? 
As you know, Turkana is a very difficult place to be. Children's life is always compromised here because of the poverty level and the situations around. So traditionally, a child's rights is not something that exists here. The parents really take care of their children. They protect them. There is there, but we still have to come up of them introducing the rights of the children that they have a right to go to school, they have rights to play, and give them their space. Scholastica and her community in Turkana are actively campaigning for children's rights. On the shores of Lake Turkana, the largest lake in Kenya, they have founded a school where they look after 272 children and young people. One of the pupils is Nazir. Hi, Willie. This is Nazir from Turkana, Kenya. Hello, Nazir. Nazir. Good to see you. And that brings me and Nazir to the important topic of the right to education. In Germany, all children have this right by being allowed to go to school. On the other hand, all children must go to school because Germany has compulsory yes. education. That is also the case in Turkana. But instead of going to school, many children there have to help their parents and therefore cannot exercise their right to education. In Turkana, there is not many children coming to school because parents do not have money to pay for them. Like a family of five children, three may come to school and two look after goods. Luckily, Nazir is sent to school by his mother. To be exact, a boarding school. His cousin Alfred goes to the same boarding school. They are both in the same class. We are in sixth grade and currently taking math lessons. It's very important to go to school, so when we're older, we can become doctors, pilots, or even teachers. Alfred hopes to be able to pursue a good profession one day and not have to live in poverty. In addition to math and the other usual subjects, there is also a school subject called agriculture, because learning how to eat properly is also a child's right. Unfortunately, this is a major problem in Turkana. Here at school we get three meals, whereas at home we sometimes only have one meal a day. At home, we hardly have anything to eat. And if you get anything at all, you can't keep it for yourself. You have to share it not only with your siblings, but also with friends. Alfred's family lives in poverty, and they are under constant threat from climate change. Because it hardly ever rains, there are virtually no harvests and little food. And animals like goats and cattle cannot survive without water and food. This is our home. We sleep six people in this house. This is the house of boys, and this is where we sleep, and this, and, we, and it is where we stay. This is our mother. Some sleep here, and some always sleep in this mat. We spread it down here, and some sleep. This is the, and look, the next time of mosquitoes, this is what we use to, it guide us from mosquitoes. And also, we use this one as a light in, our, in this house. This is what we use. And this, these are our jerkans. We always use to fetch water. Nazir would also like to show his home village, but his mother lives too far away. My mother passed troubles, but I thank her because she brought me to school, and I am happy to be here, because without being in school, you will not make your future. The best thing that ever happened to me was that my parents decided to send me to school so that I could learn. This is our dome, and in this dome, we are sleeping 28 boys, and everybody has his own bed and mattress and sheets. So it is better to sleep in school because we are sleeping in a safe place. Yeah. Yes, a safe place where your children's rights are upheld and respected. Good luck to you both. Scholastica, anything else you want to add? 
Yes, yes, for sure. Without education, without uh, our services here, I think these children would be suffering a lot because uh, with education, we have managed to enroll many children in the school. They have at least a place where they can get a plate of food, place where they can interact with other children, where they can play, where we can pay attention to them, affection. They encounter a, a, like a motherly place also in the schools, which is somehow also bringing them uh, to the notion and to the awareness that there is other opportunities. When they go through education, it will change. While the children are being taken care of at school, Scholastica has her hands full as a nurse helping many other children in Turkana. When people drink contaminated water, they get diarrhea. Scholastica vaccinates children against various diseases and looks after pregnant women. After all, children's rights begin with the very, very small unborn babies in their mother's wombs. So we depend very much on donors and support to be able to run these programs and to support this community. So thank you very much for that. I will pass on your thanks. And I also thank all of you for being committed to the children in Turkana. Thank you so much. We hope to see you here soon. Bye-bye, Scholastica. And the support is only possible because the Sternsinger collect donations. And if you're not yet a Sternsinger, Join us. I'm curious to see if there are any Sternsinger here at the school. Hey guys, I want to know something. Who of you are Sternsinger, carol singers? All carol singers come to the front. What's your name? Super. Hey, there are quite a few of you. Are you all carol singers? I want to tell you something. I think you're great. I'm really a fan. You don't just stand up for your own rights. You also make sure that children all over the world can enjoy their rights and have a better life as a result. You are awesome. And that's why I have a surprise for you. Take a look at what I have here. Ta-da! Crowns for you! Are you already a carol singer? Would you like to join in? Have you ever been a carol singer? Would you like to join? You'll get one. You know why? Anyone can join the carol singers, no matter what. You want to join? Look, I'll put this on your head. And now there's another project that the carol singers are supporting. It's in Colombia, in South America. And it's also about children's rights. This is Bogota, the capital of Colombia. Over 7 million people live here hundreds of thousands of them in extreme poverty. For very different reasons, most of which are not of their own doing. Bogota's poor neighborhoods are not safe places to live. There are dangerous gangs that sell drugs, for example. Many parents don't let their kids out of the house because of fear. Other parents have no time for their kids because they have to work around the clock to make ends meet. I'm now meeting with Diana and her brother Jader from Colombia. Hi Willy, this is Jader at Ben Poster. Nice to see you. Great that our meeting worked out. Hello Willy, how are you? I'm Diana and I'm here at Ben Posta. I'm delighted. Tell me a bit about Ben Posta. I've been here for a year and two or three months and I really like it here. I didn't have many friends at my last school. I was more reserved and I didn't talk to new children. I've developed a lot more here than at my last school. I like it here. My favorite subjects are math and self-directed learning. This includes various activities, for example, communication, sports, theater, science and technology, environmental science, and so on. Diana also tells me that in Ben Posta they try to find God in the everyday. We can find God in everyday life everywhere in our community, in many different places. For example, we say the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, or the Creed. Because our guiding principle at Ben Posta says, 
Seeking God is our privilege. Warum? Why are you actually at Ben Posta? Why don't you live at home? Where I used to live, it's sometimes a bit dangerous. There's drug dealing, marijuana and other substances. There's a lot of theft and robberies, it's very dangerous. The worst part is the drug scene. My mom drives a bicycle cab in our city in Soacha. That's her job. When she was at work, no one could look after us children. We were on our own and we looked after each other. She always did everything she could to make sure we had something to eat. Even if she sometimes had to give up her own food so that us children had enough to eat. Diana's and Jader's mother, Martha, eventually saw no way out. To protect her children from the violence in her neighborhood and to ensure that they were looked after, she entrusted them to Ben Posta. Ben Posta not only campaigns for children's rights, the organization also offers Diana and Jader what their mother would like to offer them but cannot, a family-like community. It consists of 70 children and young people whose parents visit once a week. It's hard that my children are so far away. I visit them every eight days. I do that every week. I never miss an appointment, whether I'm ill or not. It's a joy for me to see my children at Ben Posta. I want my children to succeed in life, to finish their studies, to achieve what I could never have. It is very difficult for Martha to live apart from her children, but she knows that Ben Posta is a great opportunity for Diana and Jader. While criminal gangs set the tone in their neighborhood, Ben Posta is a peaceful democracy. No child or young person is at a disadvantage or favored here. Everyone is treated equally and granted children's rights. But everyone also has certain duties that they contribute to the community. I've heard that you have a mayor at Ben Posta. How does that work? Diana explains to me that Ben Posta is a democratic children's republic. It is administered by a mayor. The election is currently taking place, as it does every two years, with various young people running for office. The children's right to co-determination and participation comes to life in the mayoral election. I'm very excited that I get to vote for the new mayor of Ben Posta. This is very important. I don't know how else to say it. Ben Posta is simply great. Especially because the rights of children and young people are implemented and protected there. And Diana can only confirm that. I love being at Ben Posta. I believe you. Thanks, Willy, and greetings to Germany. Bye. Thank you very, very much. Take care. Ciao. The children at Ben Posta have a mayor. And the children here at the Papelze Elementary School have a parliament. And that's where I'm going now. Hi, Willy. Hello. We have a seat for you here. Great. Have you prepared a special seat for me? Yes. And you are the student parliament. Yes. Who is allowed to participate? Class representatives. Uh, Inas, I already know you. So, class representatives, their proxies and teachers. And what is this meeting about? Right now we're talking about refugees and how we take them in at school. It's about children's rights again. Yes. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, can I watch for a bit? Yes. Okay. 
Does anyone else have something to add? Emily? That the children learn German? Introducing the class representatives. That we play with the kids. We smile at each other. Yes, I can well understand that. That's what I felt when I came to your student parliament. You were all so friendly, and that helped me to feel included. It's certainly the same for children who come here from abroad, because maybe they've fled their country for whatever reason. What else can we do in the future when refugees come to our school? Perhaps we could choose a buddy child who would show them everything and play with them during the break and in after-school care when they are there. I think your ideas for integrating other children into your school community are really great. But why don't you leave that to the teachers? They could do it too. Why is it the children's business? Because it's important that adults listen to us. There are some adults who don't listen to children and say, we are older than you, you have to listen to us, even though we actually have the right to our own opinion. I also get that it's essential that you all know about your different rights, because only if you know what you're allowed to do, what you're entitled to, can you say, hey, wait a minute, this is about me, I'm entitled to this. And what happens now? Now it's time to say bye to the student parliament. Oh, okay. Many thanks to everyone in the student parliament for listening and being so honest. Jennifer, I'll shake your hand on behalf of everyone and thank you. Thank you very much. And now here's a summary for you. In Turkana, the Sternsinger partners ensure that children's rights are upheld, as school children Nazir and Alfred and other kids have the opportunity to live a life without poverty. Diana and Jader have found a home full of children's rights at Benposta. And the new mayor is Duvan, and he'll be advocating for the wishes and rights of children in the future. And as a farewell, the kids from the Children's Rights School are now performing a rap they wrote themselves. Of course, it's about children's rights. Three, two, one! You were great! And so were you watching at home. And if you want to find out more about children's rights, just go to sternsinger.de to find out everything you need to know. It's written for kids, of course. Take care.